This presentation is on nanocomposites for electric motor insulation systems. The main motivation is a rapid growth that's projected for electric vehicles. As seen as in the figure to the right, uh, EV sales are expected to eventually overtake combustion vehicles. And to meet this increasing demand, companies are developing more and more efficient electric powertrains. These powertrains are however limited by the thermal management capabilities uh, where heat generated by the motor during operation must be removed to ensure optimal operating conditions as well as achieving higher power densities. An AC motor is comprised of a spinning rotor that contains either permanent magnets or electrical conductors. The stator um, has coils of wires which generate a rotating magnetic field. This applies a rotating torque on the rotor and energy is lost by heat during operation of the motor uh, in various locations. We'll focus on the stator windings and the thermal insulation system. The stator wires are coated with an insulating varnish or resin. This is at first liquid when applied as shown in the figure to the right. However, once cured, it hardens into a varnish that provides uh, electrical insulation, thermal protection, increased mechanical stiffness, and vibration resistance. Overheating of the stator windings is an issue that can cause permanent damage to the insulating varnish. So this is an area that can be improved. The problem is that traditional resins alone exhibit low thermal conductivity. One solution is to modify the varnish material and improve the thermal conductivity artificially. Conventional methods uh, exist and they use solid microparticles mixed into the resin. However, this can have negative effects to other important properties, such as the dielectric strength. Advanced manufacturing can be used to realize smaller particles that are on the, on the nanoscale. This can result in higher interfacial areas with the resin matrix, uh, minimizing these negative effects. The design requirements include uh, the function, which is to create nanoparticles from uh, bulk material, uh, the objectives which are to increase thermal conductivity while minimizing negative impacts to other important properties as well as to decrease the cost of manufacturing. Constraints include uh, that the design must be suitable for high production rate industrial production. Design process. In order to create a resin with the thermal and electrical benefits of nanoparticles, we need to be able to create the nanoparticles. Using advanced manufacturing technologies, we can create these tiny particles. So several, several methods exist, such as ball milling, soil gel, sputtering, hydrothermal synthesis, and laser ablation. We will go through the basic operation of each method and summarize the disadvantages and advantages of each. Ball milling. Ball milling is a top-down method, and this means that bulk material is reduced into smaller particles. A ball milling machine consists of a horizontal rotating cylinder into which the bulk material and small balls are placed. The uh, cylinder rotates and the ball motion due to gravity grinds the bulk material down into nanoparticles. The balls can be made of ceramic or stainless steel. There is also another type of ball milling called high energy ball milling. In this setup, you have several rotating balls attached to a rotating turntable. Now, the rotation of the balls is in the opposite direction of the turntable, and this creates much higher forces due to centrifugal force compared to just gravity alone. So the advantages of ball milling are its high production rate, its ability to create uniform particles, and it's a cheap and simple operation. The disadvantages are that the balls can contaminate the nanoparticles. Um, remember that the balls grind the bulk material, so there is wear between them. Other disadvantages include the size of the machine, the high levels of noise and vibration from the machine, and the energy required to operate the machine. Soil gel. This is a bottom-up method, which means that the process creates particles from atoms and molecules. The process begins with starting materials called precursors in a solution, and next, the solution undergoes hydrolysis and condensation reactions to form a gel. Then the gel is aged and dried to form a crystalline material. 
This can take a long time. If you vary the temperature, time, and agitation during the gelation process, you can end up with nanoparticles. So the ad advantages of soil gel are its low production costs and high purity of nanoparticles. Uh, the disadvantages are the high cost of the raw materials for creating the precursor solution and the long production time from the aging and drying process. Spray pyrolysis. This method involves spraying a precursor solution at high pressure through a nozzle to create small droplets. The droplets are then heated to evaporate them, thus creating nanoparticles. The particles created are spherical in shape. Uh, the advantages are that the process operates at normal atmospheric conditions, meaning you don't need a vacuum environment, and it's low operational cost. The disadvantages are that it is difficult to control the size of the droplets leading to a non-uniform particle size. Sputtering. Sputtering involves hitting a target material with a beam of plasma, which erodes the surface of the target material. The ejected atoms are then deposited on a substrate for collection. This process is performed in a magnetron, which provides a vacuum environment to reduce contamination from impurities in the air. The advantages are that it produces uniform particles and that a wide selection of materials can be used as the target material. The disadvantages are the high cost and complexity of the machinery, that being the magnetron, and the low deposition rate, which leads to a low production rate. Next is hydrothermal synthesis. This process is about creating small crystals of the target material in a solution of minerals in hot water under high pressure. And this is typically done in an autoclave. The process requires you to heat a solution at a specific temperature and pressure for a set period amount of time, followed by drying processes. The advantages are that it's easy to control the shape and size of the particles formed and the high quality of the particles. The disadvantages are the high cost of the autoclave and the prolonged high temperature and pressures required leads to a low production rate. Laser ablation. So this involves striking the target material with the laser beam to create nanoparticles. The laser energy is absorbed by the target material and it separates the atoms. It is usually done in a beaker full of water in order to collect the particles. The advantages include the high purity of the particles formed and the disadvantages are the high cost of the laser system and the high energy required to operate the, the laser system as well as the low production rate. Now, out of all the methods researched, the best method for creating nanoparticles for use in electric motors at an industrial scale would be ball milling. Now, just to summarize, ball milling produces the most nanoparticles per hour, resulting in a high production rate, and it is a cheap and simple operation, and it also produces uniform particles. Next, I will talk about the technical analysis of nanocomposites. By adding particles with high thermal conductivity to resin, it provides a pathway in resin for heat to flow. In one study, researchers have found by adding alumina nitride particles and hexagon boron nitride particles into a polymide resin, the composite could reach a thermal conductivity of 9.3 watts per meter Kelvin. It is 50 times higher than the conductivity of polymide resin, which is 0.18 watts per meter Kelvin. However, thermal conductivity is not the only consideration. Dielectric strength is also important since the composite have to provide electrical insulation for stator winding. Researchers have found that nanoparticles could lead to a decrease in dielectric strength. Dielectric strength starts to fall off when the nanoparticles are more than 3% by weight. At 3% by weight, thermal conductivity is increased by 40%. So this is a good balance between dielectric strength and thermal conductivity. In conclusion, ball milling was chosen for its simplicity and high protection rate. The drawback of ball milling is the contamination to nanoparticles due to ball wear. Future work would be reducing or eliminating the contamination. 
The performance of nanocomposites is promising. Thermal conductivity has the potential to be increased by 50%, 50 times. To maintain dielectric strength, composites with nanoparticles of 3% by weight is chosen. It has a 40% increase in thermal conductivity. Future work would be reducing the impact on dielectric strength at high nanoparticle percentage. Thank you for watching.